Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, and in this video we're going to have an informal chat about contrast paints. In case you're unaware, these are the brand new range of paints that Games Workshop officially announced at Warhammer Fest after a few months of teasing what they would be. It was there that we had the contrast paints first revealed to us. We spent the first day in a number of seminars being run by the teams behind the production of the paint, as well as some live painting demonstrations from Duncan, Peachy, and various other members of the Games Workshop heavy metal and army painting teams. But it wasn't until the second day that we actually finally let loose on the paints themselves. We had around six hours with the full range of contrast paints and the two new primer colours, and we were free to mix and combine them with any of the other items in the Citadel range as well. And it's that experience that I'll be talking about in this video. So to better demonstrate some of the points that I want to make, uh, let's look at some of the models that I actually painted on that day. The first of these is the uh, Borant Arch Regent. The model that you see here has been painted entirely with contrast paints over the new Wraithbone Primer. From my experience at the seminar and talking to the painting team, I could see how these paints would work particularly well with the organic areas and wanted to try it out my, for myself. My first step in painting the model was to hit it with some Gilman flesh, but instead of adopting the one thick coat tagline of contrast paints, I wanted to see how subtle the new paints could be. So I mixed them with some of the new contrast specific medium which has been released alongside the contrast paints and that reduced the intensity of the pigments but came the same, uh, basically kept the same properties of the fluid. The result was this pale flesh colour that, that we've got here. In one coat I'd not only achieved the shading in the recesses but also had this subtle skin tone on the more raised areas as well. From here I wanted to push the intensity of the shadows a bit more, uh, so I applied some more of the Gilman flesh straight from the pot and directly into some of the recesses. I also used some purples as well as you can see on the stomach. Uh, at this point my first layer was still wet, but this allowed me to do some wet blending, creating some smoother transitions from the dark to the light areas. I'd say it was here that I really saw the potential of contrast, beyond just being a tool for beginners and speed painters. Um, it was obvious that these new paints could give you, uh, even the more, more experienced painter, some really interesting effects like the ones I've, I've been using here. So once I had a, a kind of a, a basic skin tone, I wanted to see how I could uh, use the contrast paints in different ways. So I turned my attention to some red markings that I've got here across the shoulders. I took inspiration from the Blister Skin Grand Court. I think it was not long after uh, the new Flesh Eater Quartz army book had come out, so I had been reading through that. Um, I kind of wanted to create a burnt and sun damaged skin across the shoulders. So for this, um, I use probably my favorite contrast paint that I've used so far, and that is Blood Angels Red, if I remember the name correctly. So this time, instead of mixing it with the medium, I just used it straight from the part, and then applied like a stippling effect over the shoulders, and then it, re it really worked well for this. It's like got a smooth flow and high pigmentation, meant that it was really easy to do these kind of freehand details, because um, normally with the paint, you're either applying it too thickly to get the, the same kind of intensity of the pigment, um, but these straight out of the parts, a couple of dabs, and you've got a really nice strong color. So I built up the layers over a few passes, and then uh, allowing the previous one to fully dry before I made the next one. And then as the layer of the contrast is ever so slightly translucent, you could still see just below um, the lower levels and it kind of created this like appearance of like subsurface details, kind of like how you can see your veins beneath your skin, but they're, they're a little bit kind of hazy in a slightly different color. So normally I suppose you would, to get this kind of similar technique, you'd use glazing and you kind of build up the layers slowly like that way. But with the contrast, because of the translucence and you can apply a lighter, um, over a darker surface, you can probably create some really nice little details. So you could maybe draw some veins on and then go over with one of the lighter colors, maybe one of the whites, and then it would create the effect that you're seeing details beneath the skin surface or whatever surface you're actually painting. But uh, as with anything, I don't want to kind of sit here and just um, say how amazing these contrast paints are at everything, because there are some limitations to contrast paints. Um, they do work exceptionally well on flesh and other organic features, but they don't quite work as well in areas of kind of like stone or not necessarily organic areas. Um, so I mean the ruined pillar that I've got here on the Sarch region um, is a good example of this. So I think it's basically because the larger and more flat surfaces don't allow the contrast to have the same degree of definition as you would do from having a regular base coat and then a wash and a highlight. Um, I think the area looks a little bit bland and washed out rather than nice and crisp, but that I mean could be part of the color, base color that I've used here. Maybe I would have been better off using um, Gracie as the primer rather than Wraithbone, maybe. Um, but it really, I do need to kind of have a bit more experimentation with these and see how they work on non-organic surfaces. 
But that's not to say that they don't work at all on non-organic surfaces, because I actually had some really good experiences. I mean, if you look here at the um, this arch region, you can see that I've used an orange over the um, over the metal area to create a really nice, strong, rusted effect. And this is something I explored um, when looking at this uh, blight hauler as well. I just kind of wanted to really focus on doing some different techniques here, rather than just doing the basic kind of one coat, one thick coat, and then building up from there. I really wanted to go and see what kind of details I could create. So I had a look at um, this kind of front um, armor panel here, and you can see the orange makes like a really nice and instant rust color. It's like a really nice vibrant orange, and it was ridiculously quick to apply. And I just kind of added some more of the, um, I think it was snake bite leather, and just kind of like directly added that into some of the recesses, and that created some really nice shading. The panel itself is a good example of how you can um, use a number of the contrast paints in conjunction to create some interesting effects and interesting textures. So I think I started out here with um, kind of like a pale green, I built up oranges and various different browns, um, mixing the medium um, just to kind of thin them out and give them maybe a bit more control over them, and then I used some uh, of the darker browns and almost the blacks as well, just to create some little flecks and little um, freehand damage on the surface, and you can see they're actually really nicely detailed. Um, and very, you get a really nice thin line because they're so fluid, but because they're so pigmented, you can just literally do one line and that's all you need. So if to spin around the, the blight hole here and look at the back where you've got the flesh areas, I just want to try out a few different techniques on this flesh, just seeing how different colors work. So at the top I've got, I think it was Flesh Terrors Red. That was um, thinned down with some of the medium, just applied over the top, and it gives you kind of like a nice, um, quick blood letter. Uh, appearance. The next one was while well, using uh, some of the pinks and some of the purples, I used the overall pink on the surface and then directed um, some of the dark purples directly into the recesses. That creates some nice effects as well. My favorite one is probably the bottom. This is using, I think it's plague skin or plague bearer skin or something like that. Um, and that works really nicely. As you can see, I just applied it over the surface and then used some of the browns and just directed those into the recesses and also applied a little bit of the purple just over the veins as well to help make those definitions really stand out. So this is going to be really nice for any Nurgle armies that you might have. So I also wanted to try out how they worked with in conjunction with other methods. Now, one of the ones that I wanted to try out was to see how you could build upon them using traditional techniques like the glazes. So I've got this um, this Warplock Engineer here, and I've, you can see I've used the red, and I've also used one of the rust effects on the gun there. Um, but what I wanted to create in the robes was I went over with one of the greens. I, again, can't remember the exact color name, but um, yeah, I think it was one of the Warpstone uh, green ones, those kind of green colors, the light greens. And I went over the, the whole of the robes, which is like with the, kind of the, the traditional one thick coat, and that created a nice um, degree of shading and highlights and base color. But then I wanted to give it a little bit more richness and avoid some of the washed out appearance that the Grey Seer Primer was giving it. So over the top of the green base, I went over with some of uh, the Lamenta's yellow. And that really kind of helped to boost the greens and it changed some of the washed out areas into a slightly yellowish tinge and give them a really nice vibrant color. And to be honest, to create this kind of effect with regular washes, regular base coats, it would actually have been um, quite painstaking. It would have actually have taken quite a few passes. But no, this was actually done really quickly. Um, I probably spent longer waiting for the actual contrast paints to dry. Um, rather than actually applying them. And I think this is one of the things where it's going to be a slightly different technique that you're going to need to adopt when using contrast paints because they do dry slower than regular paints, especially if you add the medium. Um, so it's not the same kind of you paint it on and it's dried immediately. You can kind of adjust them. You can add a little color in. You can wet blend them. They really do change how you're painting compared to how you would traditionally be doing the regular base coat, uh, regular layers. And I suppose the closest approximation to them would be inks. They're not the same as inks, but they're the kind of that very high pigmentation, um, slow drying um, wash almost, but they really aren't the same as washes. And I think one some of the comments that I've seen of people saying they're just high pigmented washes, in a way, yes, but then also they've got a very different um, consistency. And I also think that these paints are gonna be used beyond just the beginner level. You can see some of the examples I toyed around with here, you can really create some not really nice effects. Um, you just need to be a bit creative with how you use them. You can combine them with some of the regular paints and you can get some really nice uh, results. And I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on the full range again, just so I can really go to town with some of the ideas that I've had coming away from the day. Now, one of the things I actually didn't do much of on the day because I'd already been demonstrated it quite a bit um, 
from some of the uh, from Peachy and Duncan the day before. And we basically did some of the the more one thick coat applications, how you can quickly paint models, just get the colors on there, get them painted, and get them onto the tabletop really quickly. Um, but when I was at Warhammer Fest, I actually had a go at doing this, um, and I painted this uh, Plague Marine using the same techniques that they were using, basically. So the armor itself was actually um, really simple to do. I used some of the, the snake bite leather and I directly applied that into the recesses. And whilst that was still wet, I went over the whole thing with some of the, the plague skin or plague bearer. And what it did is it kind of drew out some of the snake bite that was still in the recesses and it was still a little bit wet. So it drew it out and it created this nice transition between the really recessed shadows and then the armor panel itself, giving this really nice kind of shadowed, um, highly detailed, high contrast, but then also a little bit dirty as well, perfect for kind of creating um, that plague bearer look. So yeah, I think I've waffled on probably enough for this video. I just want to give a quick experience about what I thought of the paints. Um, I've known about these for quite a while, so it's been a real pain not to talk about that. I've seen all the speculations about everything going on. Um, there's a few things I want to, a few questions I want to answer myself that I didn't get a chance to do on the day. Things like using them with airbrushes, things like using them over metallic paints, um, and I will hopefully be addressing those in future videos, future tutorials. Um, and as always, let me know what you want to see um, in the tutorials, especially the contrast ones. I want some good ideas to pursue, be they simple, basic ideas, but I think Warhammer TV will probably have most of those covered. Um, but I also want to just create some really nice, interesting designs, maybe things that people don't initially straight away think about when they see um, contrast paint. But uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions about contrast paints that I've not already covered, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, again, I should be getting some very soon, so expect some tutorials in the near future. So, anything left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.